You just can't get any more real than real estate. <laughs> You're too funny. <laughs> Moving forward with the Decker team. Moving forward together with the Decker team. We've created for you free access to over 587 Life's Inside Track episodes where we share insider tips, making house home, how to grow and build wealth. And the great news is you can get access to them from home, from the office, or on the go. And our YouTube channel, if you haven't subscribed yet, yeah, just might want to do that. So in this segment, we're going to explore that it is simpler to understand real estate than it is an intangible asset. And what does that mean, Ken Decker? Well, what is an intangible asset? It's something that you can't hold. Like maybe you have stock certificates. You can hold the stock certificate. You can, but now they're all electronic. You don't even get them anymore. Oh, yes. You don't even get to hold them. You used to be able to hold on to your stock certificate, but what... That was really intangible because what was behind that was some company that you didn't know anything about or mutual funds in your RSP. You can see something on a piece of paper, but there's nothing that you can hold on to that's intangible. Right. Whereas a house or real estate, whether it's an Mm -hmm. investment property, whether it's multifamily, it's the real deal. Right. And many people have come to me and said, oh, well, why don't I... Why don't I sell my house or why do I not buy it at all? I'll just rent and I'll take all my extra money, like my what I would have used for down payment and whatever. And I'm going to put that in the stock market or the, you know, the mutual funds and build wealth that way. So fortunately, we have Roz and Sean. And I think Roz has this beautiful story about a $30,000 dress. Now, she's not wearing that particular <laughs> dress, but you do look like $30,000, at least like I should say a million bucks in that dress. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> yes, it, it, it's such a great segue. At the time, I was uh, working in a stockbroker's firm. I just started in Nortel, if anyone remembers that. The Nortel stock was starting to go down and everybody said, now's the time to buy, now's the time to buy, now's the time to buy. I was like, okay, I had no idea. So we uh, took a sixty or six thousand seven hundred six thousand, yeah, almost seven thousand dollars <laughs> <laughs> credit card advance oh, at twenty four point nine percent interest to buy. Let's call it twenty five percent. Let's say seven thousand sure, dollars at twenty five percent. Yeah, at uh-huh. um, to buy hundred shares of Nortel stock. Because How many shares? Hundred. Hundred shares. Yeah, mm-hmm. hundred shares. And then uh, for anybody who knows anything about the stock market back in the day, you know, it just continued to depreciate, depreciate, depreciate to nothing. And um, a couple of years later, I w- it was given a check for $67.50 to close out my stock account. They didn't even want me as a client <laughs> anymore because that was the only trade that I'd ever made. Though in the meantime, that money stayed on our credit card for two years because we never had it to begin with. And then we consolidated it into a mortgage. So then we paid more interest on it. And then we ended up selling the house. So we paid, it was um, a closed mortgage. So we ended up paying huge penalties to pay off that mortgage. So in the end, that $67.50 check I bought a dress with where the actual value was Closer to thirty thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, wow. the lost, the lost income and lost potential. The lost potential. I still well, have that the, dress. The interest well, that yeah. They paid. yeah, it wasn't even lost potential. No. It was a hundred percent. It cost you thirty thousand dollars to get that sixty-seven thousand dollars check. It, what color was the dress, by the way? Uh, it was black and white. I, I black still and have white? it. And I, I still have it. You yeah, still have it, it? It's, yes, it's sort of a, a vintage '50s look, so it still it still kind of works. But yeah. then I I keep it for the reminder. I don't oh. actually wear it anymore. Okay, but I was going to say the, the question you never ask a woman is: Does it still fit? Yes, <laughs> it's actually too big. So I'm, I'm pleased to big. say yes. Oh wow! Okay. But I, what I'm loving about this story it just hit me. I, I mean, I've heard the story quite a few times, and it always is. It astounds me to think something that we perceive as an investment. This isn't even like borrowing to spend. This is actually <laughs> borrowing to invest. Yeah. And yet, because it wasn't a real thing and you didn't understand it. No, no. Right? When we don't understand it, I think we put ourselves in a hard spot, <laughs> right? It could work out. I mean, yeah. you hear lots of success stories too about it working out for somebody. And when you say it was black and white, I love this, that it's a very much a black and white thing. If you can't understand it, 
don't do it. Yeah. The other interesting thing that I just got from the story is the way you leverage to buy that, which you thought was an investment, but the, the, the form of leveraging that you use the highest interest rate. Right. And, and Sean, uh, Sean and I have had conversations around borrowing money and and the difference between leveraging and borrowing money. Can you uh, enlighten us a little bit on that? I would love to. So we've helped several people work through their their finances and why their credit card bills are so high. And people go out and they'll spend $50 on their credit card. And as a result of doing that, they keep paying the interest on that meal, which was $50, which then in turn over months adds up and adds up and becomes something like two, $300. And then like Roz did with her dress, putting that into a mortgage or something, that meal now is going to cost you how much over 30 years or each time. So <laughs> you can even figure it out. Like the calculation <laughs> is just, it's, and we've done it, right? We, we were the consolidation king and queen. Yeah, so we yeah, totally get the issue. And... Like if we only understood it. Yeah. And, and it's something that you don't think about it's because you have that, again, instant gratification that you want to do. And knowing if you can't pay cash for it, maybe you shouldn't do it because it's going to end up costing you for the, quite a while. Mm. Now, on the other side, if, for example, we use real estate, if you're borrowing money, there is good debt too. So you can borrow for a mortgage or borrow the down payment if you have a strategy to refinance in the end to pull that money out to own that property, like for an investment property, um, that is considered good debt if you're using it wisely, in my opinion. And you have to still understand the real estate you're buying. Absolutely. Because we've bought real estate, slap our hands, but I won't because it makes a terrible noise on the radio, <laughs> that we didn't understand. No. You're like in a foreign country or even in Canada, but it was complicated and we couldn't wrap our brains around it. And we thought, well, we'll take somebody else's word on it. So I think this whole thing, real estate, simple to understand, but if you're not finding it simple to understand, make sure you understand it before you mm -hmm. even borrow to for good debt. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Speak with experts like yourselves, of course. And or yourselves. Thank you. Yeah. And to get the, the wise counsel. Right. Cool. And so if you want to stay connected with us, we'd love to be having you, <clears throat> excuse me, in our community. And you can do that by sending us a brief email to together at DeckerTeam.com. Okay. So the bottom line here is you want to think about where are you putting your money? Because, and if you don't understand it, don't do it, right? Mm -hmm. And what would you think is a way to get the understanding if you don't have it? I mean, you could read the wealth formula. That's where you guys started. Absolutely. We'll talk more about that, but that was the beginning of really your journey back to real estate. And for Sean, was it not your first journey into real estate? Uh, I believe it was. I mean, I always had it in the back of my mind. To, but in to terms get, of actually owning any? To owning any, it got us there, yes. Yeah. Yes. That was the that was the caveat in, in what we were doing to get there. Wow. Cool. Well, we've, uh, we've journeyed together for probably six, seven years. Mm -hmm. Nine. Oh, nine. <laughs> okay. December 2014. <laughs> All right. Nine years. And of that the last six or so, you've been actually actively buying real estate. So we've gotten very close. So. And uh, Oprah says this, that a home is a great investment. Why? Because you can't live in a stock and... You can't live in a mutual fund either. So together, we're creating and clarifying your options because wisdom will then flow. Moving forward with the Decker team. Moving forward together with the Decker team.